What's up, family? Get this video a big thumbs up. So I'm coming back to you with another video because it looked like the WNBA fans is calling for these referees to be fired. After they're accused, the WNBA are fixing this year final and Shell Reeve erupts on reporters, man. The WNBA finals took place three days ago, which was Sunday night. And I'm here to tell you it was sensational for the most part. Now, and that is because of New York Liberty. I don't know. It looked like, uh, I don't know. Not the same darn team. Brianna Store and Sabrina Unescu played over 40 plus minutes, and guess what? They was combined for 18 total points. Yes, man. 18 total points in the 62-67 final score in the WNBA final. This was by far the worst performance. And the New York Liberty have displayed all season long, and they look bad, 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 man. And I'm here to tell you it was simply ridiculous. Now, one call sparked debate online throughout this whole situation, and I'm here to tell you it was, this was very questionable. And this was what I'd be saying about them WNBA refs, right? This is the clip presented to you guys on the screen. Check it out, family. So as you guys see, right, there was a foul called against Brianna Stewart. And I'm here to tell you, the fans were not happy. And this is what they had to say. Let's scroll down into the comments, family. So we have one comment that said, Clarence Griffin here, the fix was in front, the fix was in from the beginning. The referee should be given MVP. Mm. Let's continue to scroll down, family. So we got another person that I seen that had an interesting comment. Ty Funk here, he says, lost the little respect I have for the W. That was the most obviously rigged game I have see I have season in any profession sport. Um, or I have seen. I think he meant to say seen instead of season. Um, Stuart, clear as day traveled, and they called a phantom foul instead of the travel for what basically was game. Not to mention a 25 to 8 feet differential. Man, look. Hey, look, man. <laughs> it's wild. Um, I seen another tweet or another tweet that was very interesting. Um, Sid right here says, and she traveled before WNBA so so want Liberty to win, man. So, look, now they ain't never won a finals in 20-something years. I think 28 years or something they were saying like that. But they didn't have to rig this thing, man. They didn't have to rig the game. It's just ridiculous because why do that when you know the eyes of the world is watching you? One person that I know, everybody in Caitlin Clark land, is not fond of Cheryl Reeves. Now, I got a little sympathy for Cheryl Reeves, even though her team had ample chances to come back, right? And five different chances to shoot a three, to tie the game, and send it to double overtime, right? And I mean, we're singing a totally different story, but they couldn't find a three-point shot to save their life. Neither could New York either. But dang, man, the New York kept tripping in overtime, and they had like five different chances to tie the darn game. It was just a whole little weird game. But with all that being said, family, let's check this out. Because this was Cheryl Reeve, and she had a lot to say, family. So with no further ado, check out the clip. What, what made the defense so difficult over the last half of that game? It's, it, was it just what New York did, or, or what, what were you seeing there? You're from Cheryl. Do you want to ask her or me? Abby, do you have box scores? Um, I mean, they turned up the pressure. This is the end of the game. Uh, of course, we're both trying to win, so uh, they turned up the pressure. We got a couple turnovers. We didn't execute our offensive plays at the end, um, so that's what their defense was doing. Coach, maybe you could speak to that too, just about what you that? saw with the offense over the last half of that game as, as New York tried I to saw, the pressure. I saw a very physical and aggressive New York team. Um, you know, we know this from, you know, being a part of the game for so long that, you know, sometimes you get away with stuff when you're physical and aggressive, and they certainly did. Um, you know, it's, it's a shame that officiating, you know, had such a hand in, in, a, in a series like this. Um, obviously, there's always going to be a team that's going to be a little more disappointed than the other. I thought today uh, was incredibly disappointing. Um, the challenge, we, we have got to change our challenge rules, and the officials doing the game should have a third party because that was not a foul. That call should have been reversed on that challenge. Now, remember what I showed you guys at the beginning with Brianna Stewart, and they called that a foul, and it wasn't a foul. That is what Cheryl Reeves is referring to, family. But let's continue. If we sent that clip in, well, first of all, Nafisa Collier, the number of times that she's held, et cetera, and there's, there's nothing down that end, right, which we, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, for whatever reason uh, in this series, that was kind of the way it was. But... 
when at the other end, when, when we challenged it, if we would have turned that clip in, they would have told us that it was marginal contact, no foul. Guaranteed, guaranteed. So when you review, those should be the same parameters that you're reviewing with. But the three people that are on the game need a third party to let them know because you know, that decided the game. That decided the game. Next question standing to your right. Sure. Forgive me for changing the subject for a moment. But um, you did such a great job of preventing Brianna Stewart and Sabrina Ionescu from scoring for the most part tonight. What about Jonquil Jones made her so difficult to stop tonight? When I mean, you watch series. the whole series, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, yeah, so what makes her difficult is you're spending a lot of time guarding Sabrina and Stewie and – you know, in some of those schemes, it created mismatches. But we were going to live with some of that, right? We knew that J.J. was going to score. These guys shot 30%. Shot 30%. You know, the, the difference was in the foul line. Uh, and obviously, we, we needed to execute better on offense. I think one of these guys said that. We had opportunities not to, to fuel them. But we knew they were coming. Um, we just, you know, we just needed, you know, our lead guard spot was obviously, it was rough for us tonight uh, there. You know, we get a little bit decent play out of there. We win the game. You know, but with all that happened, you know, we still almost put ourselves in position to do this. And, you know, I hurt for our players. Really, really hurt. Incredibly special group. Next question, second row, center right. Cheryl, Taylor Fee, congratulations on the season that you guys had. Um, I'm just hoping you can take me through going into halftime, executing a lot of what you wanted to do, especially on the defensive end, and it's 34-27. Does that feel smaller than it needed to be? Or are you feeling... Uh, good about where you guys are at and what that conversation was like uh, sort of for each of you in turn. Um, you know, I, I think that was just kind of the end of quarter situation. I think we were up 12. It was 32 to 20, and then we, they, we allowed them to come back to get into within seven or something like that going into the half. Um, and that's where we have to, you know, be better. And that's been throughout the series too, the end of quarters and things like that. Um, and it's hard when you're playing a team at home, a team that knows each other well and things like that. But – it's, it's, it's hard to just pick one thing, you know what I'm saying, when you still have a chance to win the game. So um, I think, yeah, we could have executed better, but there were so many things that went on throughout the game that I think we, we still gave ourselves a chance to win. It's been the same. I mean, it's game five. Everybody's making their adjustments mid-game, mid-possession. You know, we're flying around. Everybody knows each other so well at this point. We're just – everybody's trying to make a play and stop them from making a play. Um, you know, they made, they made some plays in the second half. We talked so a lot about they, handling the pressure. Yeah, handling yeah. that pressure, executing our offense, you know, not let, not turning the ball over to let them get, you know, energy and transition and things like that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Uh, next question, front row to your right. Hi, Fee. I, I'm wondering, it seemed like the shots were falling a little bit easier in the first quarter than, and so they got harder over the course of the game for you. I'm wondering, was that just because of, you know, New York tightening up? Was, did, did, did it feel like there were any particular reasons why? Maybe the players they were throwing at you were just – uh, yeah, probably because I was getting held a little bit. It was a little hard to make shots. Um, no, I think, you know, of course, like they said, uh, everyone's trying to make adjustments second half. I got a lot of shots up in the first. I was making a lot. So they tightened up their defense, um, you know, brought people in rotation, were doubling, things like that. So I think they just upped the pressure. So it got harder. Um, so, yeah. Next question, standing to the left. Yep. Coach, your team showed the heart of a champion all season, no matter what the result was. So I want to ask you how you really enjoyed this team, really cherished this team. What was your message to them in this locker room throughout this feat? And for you, Kayla, you playing with this team, with how they've loved your energy all season and enjoyed your leadership, your thoughts on playing with this team all season and how you feel that you showed the championship spirit regardless of the result. I share with them exactly what you, what you said. Um, incredibly proud that, you know, since the day we got together in training camp all the way through to the end, we were the same team. We never got the disease of me. Not one single player on the team got the disease of me. Not one. Those that were maybe in the rotation, fell out of the rotation, some that never got to play. No one ever put themselves first. No one. That is incredibly difficult to, to find uh, in, in, in this day and age. Um, so I'm really, really proud. I'm incredibly proud of the 
the number of people that were impacted by Lynx basketball and how excited they were to watch our team play. Um, it was, it was uh, I, I told them it's who they are as people, how they did it. Um, so those are things that we talked about. And I, I wouldn't trade them for anyone, anyone, any team. Do things the right way. You know, built a team within the rules. Um, you know, those sort of things that maybe right now aren't happening in our league. And, you know, did it the hard way. And you know what? We gave hope to those teams that uh, aren't willing to circumvent the cap or, you know, fly illegally or all the stuff that's happened over the last five years, right? And so, I mean, do it the right way. It gives hope for those other teams that you can build a team just like ours. You don't have to have a super team, right? You don't have to have that. There's a different way to do it. So I'm incredibly proud of them. Our next two questions will come from the second row to your right. Kay Mack was going to answer his sorry. question. Sorry. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's really rare, you know, um, in saying that this is my 11th season and I get to go out there and, and fight with women that I consider sisters. Um, that's, that's why it feels the way it does, you know, because um, every single day we came to work and we enjoyed being with each other. We enjoyed competing with each other, fighting for each other. Uh, and that's why we're here. That's why we gave ourselves a chance to compete for a championship because we showed up every day and did it the right way and did it for each other. And that's really rare in this league. The way that it's happening and all this other bullshit that people make seem like is important is not. What you have in your locker room and coming to work and showing up every single day and doing things the right way, that's the most important thing. And that's why it feels like this with each other because we care so much about each other and we wanted it for each other. Um, and that's, uh, that's the beauty of it and that's also the heartbreak of it because we deserve this shit. Our next two questions will come from the second row to your right. So Cheryl um, and or Kayla, I think he's going to end this postseason as the only player in league history to lead the league in points, rebounds, steals. Um, Free throw attempts? No, maybe <laughs> not that. Um, blocks, I think, was the other one. Um, but what can you say about the statement she's made throughout this postseason and even in this last game? Well, obviously, the exclamation point to the incredible season that she had she showed up big time, you know, for this for this team and put us in position to do um, to be within, you know, seconds of a championship. You know, she she was phenomenal. I'm I'm always yeah I'm always so in awe of Fee because um, she carries it with such grace, you know, and she carries it her own way. Uh, and as a superstar in this league, uh, it can be something else then, you know, it can become about something else, but she always keeps it about the team and always keeps it about winning and just continue to get better and better, you know, and I'm, I'm always in awe of her uh, every time she steps on the court and just the way she carries herself, no matter what's going on, is that, like, she's just so consistent. And that comes from her, you know, that's her internal amazing, like, you know, we just have so much confidence in who she is on and off the court, and I'm just, I'm lucky to be alongside of her, you know, and... Uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm just in awe. And she's had an amazing, amazing season and uh, amazing postseason, obviously. So I can't wait to see what she does in the future. In the second row. I was going to ask about Fee being phenomenal, too. Um, Cheryl, I wondered, you know, so often when we talk about who's the best player in the world, it seems to be people are arguing um, Asia or Stewie. But after this, it seems like Fee is, I mean, she's definitely not the third best player in the world, I'm pretty convinced. Um, how much do you think that like this type of postseason can help her? She's still very young. She can still get better, like catapult to an even another level next year. Yeah, and that's that's what's coming. Um, I think greater recognition. Um, you know that that's what's coming, and fees earned every bit of it. Uh, and like you said, still the season that she was having, was still it's not fee that you're hearing about, right? It's it's, it's other players, and so. Um, but I think fees earned it, and, and we'll see going into next season if. If maybe, uh, you know, she'll be a little more face of the league. Uh, we, have time for, we have time for just a couple more. Uh, next question, last row in the center. <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. You alluded a little bit to the way you, you've built this team, and um, I've definitely thought of your team as, as kind of a holistic organizational success story, the pro scouting uh, with the players you were able to get in free agency, uh, um, player development side with player like Bridget Carlton. Um, as we um, see a lot of other teams around the league either build front offices from scratch or restructure theirs um, as the league gets more competitive and owners are investing more in their team, 
what do you think the front office of the future looks like and, and what role does the head coach play in that? Oh, that's really loaded. Um, it's a lot for me to think about right now. Forgive me. Um, I don't I really don't have an answer for that. It's just pretty deep for me. Um, and plus there's proprietary secrets. Anyone else in the room? Second row. Um, Cheryl Niara came in and was great for them tonight. She what did she did she do things differently or was it just no, more that she, she was got tremendous the in the playoffs? Niara Sabli was mm -hmm. tremendous in the playoffs. Really gave them a lift every single time she got minutes and not surprised that I mean they went big, you know. It was it's crazy how the series ended, right? For four games it was about the three ball, three ball, three ball, certainly offensive rebounds throughout the whole thing. Uh, but then tonight came down to points in the paint. We don't even score in the paint. We had I don't know, 40, 44 was it, right? Um, so it was really interesting how the series ended, you know, with, with them playing bigger. You know, they won the game with their defense, no doubt about it, with their defense. And uh, But anyway, to your question, Sobley was a, you know, uh, her minutes were really good, really helped them. And I know all the headlines uh, will be Reeve cries foul. Uh, bring it on, right? Bring it on, because this shit was stolen from us. Y'all heard that now, family. <laughs> Let's rewind it. Let's replay that again. You heard she dropped the bombshell with that one. She said she ready for all the smoke, baby. Uh, bring it on, right? Bring it on because this shit was stolen from us. Bring mm. it on. A little bit of unprofessionalism there. Well, we talked about it, you know. Um, we know we could have done some things, right? But you shouldn't have to overcome to that extent. This shit ain't that hard. Officiating it is not that hard. When someone is being held, be consistent. If you don't want to call hold at one, then don't call it at the other. Be consistent. Every team asks for that, right? Sandy asked for that last game. So there are three of the games in the series, we're talking about the same damn thing, right? So um, I tell these guys, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't work out, right? It just doesn't feel right um, that you lose a series with that level of discrepancy, you know? Um, and we don't have a team that whines and complains and, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, sometimes it probably hurts us. Maybe being a little more, I don't know, something. But, I mean, I just think that, um, you know, you have a star player like Fee, you know, I just, I don't get it. I don't get how um, she can be held and go to the basket and get hit. And then a marginal, at best, at best, sends their best player to the free throw line. That's, I mean, that's just, that's tough. It's tough to swallow. Just like our 2016 championship uh, that, that, was, that was lost, um, officiating, you know, missing a shot clock violation. This, this sucks. This is for a championship, right, for both teams. Let them decide it. What contact is legal should be the same for both teams. This isn't that hard. And so it's disappointing, you know. I mean, congratulations to the Liberty on their first championship. Been around, I don't know, how long has the league been around? 28 years? It took them 28 years. Congrats to them. You know, we were, we were that close to our fifth. Just didn't happen, right? Um, it's disappointing. It's, it's incredibly disappointing. You know, but, but these guys, I mean, they, they, they got to try to pick themselves up and go, we were that damn close. And, you know, um, it hurts. It hurts. Well, family, that was Cheryl Reeves speaking to reporters immediately after the game. And like I said, one call that is being questionable now, family, the unprofessionalism got to an all-time high, but at the end of the day, this play that had took place in the game was highly questionable. And if you guys want me to pull it back up just so we can check it out again, um, I mean, this is the play that, that stirred up the whole darn thing, man. This right here. That right there. To me, it looked like she touched our ball. But at the end of the day, family, I'm letting it that she letting it be known, and fans is letting it be known that this was highway robbery in the WNBA, and um, why they ruined such a great night was such a bad call. I don't know, guys, but get down in the comment section and let me know you guys' thoughts, insight, and perspective. Get this video a big thumbs up on that no family piece.